check this out. Hey everybody, welcome back to JDM World. As you've probably seen, I've completed my Devastator build and I've got that guy running in my home theater now. And if you haven't seen it, I'll stick a link up so you can take a look at that video so you can see what I'm talking about. But I've done the build, I've got all the DSP stuff and that video is available too, check that one out. But I still have quite a bit to talk about concerning the subwoofer. So in this video, I'm gonna answer a number of questions that have come across in the forums and in the comments down below. And if you have questions, drop some more down there. But also, I'll go ahead and do a review of the subwoofer as well and talk about you know what it does in my environment, what the measurements look like, and that kind of stuff. But before we jump in, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you won't miss out on any of the new videos coming up. So the most common question that I've been asked is, what is a Devastator? Well, the Devastator is the name of the enclosure, the, the kind of subwoofer that, that this is, right? And basically, if you look at the nuts and bolts of a Devastator, it's a ported box, meaning there's a 21 inch subwoofer with a ported box. And on the front end of it, instead of it firing straight out, like you'd see in a full Marty, it fires into another box right? So it's a box firing into another box. And there's been a lot of debate around exactly is this a fifth order or is this a sixth order or is it a fourth order? Is it a horn? Is it not a horn? It is a horn that's a non-flared horn. Um, what I can tell you for sure is that it's ported on the backside. So the back of the, the, the subwoofer is absolutely slot ported, just like you'd see in a full Marty. And then on the front, it fires into another chamber that has openings down at the bottom. Um, so there's not a real port coming in and out, right? It's just open. It doesn't flare like you'd see in a typical horn. However, it models like a horn from what I understand. So it's a horn loaded slot ported subwoofer um, that is kind of insane in its frequency response. So um, it is a bandpass design, right? So you can't get away from that. It's absolutely bandpass. And its strength is not the subterranean range, right? So it's not designed to go, you know, super, super low. It's designed to have really, really impactful response in mid bass, right? And uh, we'll look at some measurements that, that will show you exactly what that looks like. And, and we'll see kind of the out in the open measurements and then some stuff in my room so you can understand what that looks like. But that's what the Devastator is. It is in a huge box. It is super massive. Watch the bill video and you can see that. Um, but it's a big subwoofer that's designed to be very efficient and have a lot of impactful bass in the mid bass range, but also be competent down to, you know, 17 hertz, something like that, uh, so that you don't miss out in the low end. Now we're to the serious part of the video. I've got the lights turned down low because I'm here to talk to you. And I wanna to talk to you about how this thing sounds. And this is, this is the review section, right? I'm gonna give you my thoughts. But to preface everything, um, let me just say that I didn't come in with very high expectations. There are a lot of things about the subwoofer that aren't super appealing to me in my room. So first, this thing is huge. It's a really big box is super heavy, so it's hard for me to move this thing around. And my room's small, so it takes up a lot of space. So, you know, the question was to me, is the size of this box gonna be worth the the expense? Because this thing's not cheap. You're, you're, you're in over a thousand bucks on these, probably. I'll, I'll show you the full breakdown on numbers in, in a bit. Um, so with the size and the expense, is the base it's gonna put out going to be what I'm looking for? Is it going to be worth it? And if you look at the curves, curves are coming here pretty soon too. They they don't look like a home theater subwoofer. It's, it's, it's not what you would say, man, that thing looks crazy cool, right? You know, some kind of line going down to 10 hertz and, you know, it, it kind of drops off pretty hard. And, um, you know, this isn't, if you're just looking at the curve, something that you would think of as a super high-end quality subwoofer that plays really low and, and gets that really low bass that you want to experience in your home theater. So to sum that up, expectations were low. Uh, so I did the build, got everything, got this thing into the basement, which was a challenge. I mean, it, it weighs a lot. And me and my wife moving it, it was tough. 
But I got this thing down and uh, I got it going. Now I'm powering it off a of Crown 1502 and that's what I thought at the time is not enough power for it. I thought that you would need at least a channel off of a uh, Behringer uh, NX6000 or a bridged 3000, something like that to give it enough juice. But I'm using a bridged uh, 1502 from Crown, which is an awesome amplifier, highly recommended. Um, but I, I didn't think it was gonna be enough. And I did some sweeps with it and I looked at the, the response and you know, it just, it, it didn't scream out to me that this thing is awesome. So I started easing myself into it. You know, I watched a couple of movies with the volume kind of low. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm scared to push this thing too hard. I didn't know what it can do, what it can't do. And you know, I, it, it was all right. But today I got Aquaman 4K in the mail and I thought this is the time where I go all out. So if you haven't watched this movie, Aquaman brings the goods when it comes to bass, sound, um, quality images, the story, eh, but the actual experience of the movie is really, really good. So I popped that in, I just jammed up the, uh, uh, the gain on my amplifier to about 75% on that 1502. Um, I have a full Marty running, I turned it up pretty loud, and then I have a sub 35 from Stark Sound, and I turned that one up pretty good too. And I thought, all right, how's this gonna sound? You know, is the full Marty gonna just stand out and am I gonna feel like everything's coming from the front? Because I've got the uh, Devastator uh, near field behind my sofa and it's like a foot from my head when I'm reclined. So I start the movie. So the movie starts with the underwater scene and you pop out into the storm and there's a shutter that's slamming against the side of this building. There's lightning, thunder, and this thing scared me. I mean, when, when you came out and that shutter hit the wall, I, I jerked. I was like, holy smoke. I mean, it was, it was crazy. It was absolutely insane. Um, and later on in the movie, there's a scene where Aquaman's a young child and he's at an aquarium and this shark bangs against the window and he kind of summons the power of the fish or whatever you want to call it. And there's a lot of low bass rumble in that scene. I thought the full Marty would eclipse the subwoofer this thing, it swallows the full Marty. I mean, it just it just eats it up. And this full Marty is running off a channel of a Behringer uh, NU6000. It's got a ton of power, but I tell you what, I mean, I, I just, I am flabbergasted <laughs> by this subwoofer. It, uh, it, it's really cool. Um, and I've not experienced anything like it before. Now, you know, that's, that's kind of the impact of this sub and it is more than I ever expected. Um, now, to talk about the sound of the subwoofer, this thing is in a bandpass box. And if you've not heard a bandpass box um, or other horn loaded subwoofers, and it could be flared or unflared, you know, they, they have a similar sound. It's different than a ported box or a sealed box. It, it just, just is, right? Um, you know, there's talks of the way harmonics work. And, and I don't know how, I don't know that stuff, right? I, I don't know. That it, it to me is forceful. This thing is violent. I mean, it hits you and smacks you around hard. Um, and listening to it by itself without your, the rest of your system going, you know, you, you could tell it's band pass because it's definitely chopping off anything that might be coming off the top end. You know, it, it sounds kind of like it's coming from a tunnel. I, I, I don't know. Um, but it, it is super strong. It's super violent. It's a visceral kind of smack you around sound um, and it, it's, it's hard. You would think that this 21 inch sub, um, you know, you'd think it's just not gonna be able to pop and hit you, but man, it, it it's right in your face if you want it to be and it, it, it will make you its bitch. <laughs> I don't know a better way to say it. Um, it's, uh, it it's really cool. Now we're gonna talk about curves a little bit. So the image that I'm gonna pop up now, it's kind of bad, but this is a, a, just a picture of a graph that Kevin from GSG did. So he took these outside, so he took a Devastator outside and just tried to figure out what the uh, actual curve would look like without any room uh, influence, right? So the bottom curve is without any EQ and then the top curve is adding, uh, you know, that 20 Hertz, uh, what is it, 12 decibel, uh, 0.7 Q uh, EQ bump to kind of bring the curve up. Now, if you look at the curve, it's, 
you know, it's not terribly impressive. Um, you know, that green one on the bottom, like I said, it rolls off hard. Um, you know, it's down five decibels at, what is that, 40 hertz? No, I'm uh, even higher, 50 hertz. Um, you know, so it, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't look like what you'd think of as a subwoofer curve. Uh, now the red one, that's uh, that's with the EQ boost, and that's that's more reasonable, right? So you're getting down to 20 before it really, really drops off, um, and you're within five decibels all the way from 20 hertz all up, up to 70, 60 hertz. So that's, that's a respectable curve. Um, so these can play low. Remember, you're gonna put a high pass filter on this thing anyway, uh, somewhere just under 20 hertz uh, to protect the driver. So it, it's not too bad. Now, let's move on. And these are some curves that I took in, in room. Now, if you look, these curves are almost exactly like the ones you see uh, from GSG. Now, ignore all the weird stuff that I've got going on at, at the top end of this thing. I, yeah, I've got some bad room interaction going on. But um, my point is, is that you know, this is a curve that I think would be typical of what you could accomplish inside of your room. So don't be shy about EQ with a sub. You absolutely need to use that to get this where you want it to be. Now let's talk about cost and about the driver, about the, the subwoofer itself, right? So the cost of this is not cheap. This this is a pricey DIY project. Now, the results you get are well worth the money, but it is an investment. If you're looking to spend 500 bucks, I mean, you're, you're not even gonna get into a, uh, the, the top end drivers for this, for that kind of money. So um, the the pieces that you need to think about, one, the first is the driver. I use the, the new Eminence 21 inch driver, and this thing is a beast. I mean, the, there were some issues with the, the shipping on the unit I got and that kind of things, but you know, that, that all got worked out and, and we're, we're good there. Um, but I, I, I don't think I could really ask for more out of this driver. Maybe, maybe a slight bump on the low end, but you know, I, to get this thing to do what it does, I think this is the way it, it needs to be built. And honestly, it, it's crazy. Uh, if you've got enough amplification power and this sub will take it, you can put enough boost in to get this thing up to where you want it to. I mean, this is going to be playing in the low 130s if you if you hit it hard with a lot of power uh, in the in that mid bass range, and that is that's crazy. So uh, anyway, the driver, the Eminence driver, is 750 bucks. Um, the BNC is a little bit less, and the Lavoche is is quite a bit less. So. You can, you can turn the dial up or down if you want to a little bit on cost with the driver, but I kind of like the idea just going all in for this thing. If you're gonna spend the money, go ahead and pay the extra 200 bucks or whatever uh, to get the, the top end eminence driver for this thing. It, it's really worth it. So the next item is the enclosure. It runs $500 from GSG. You can find all of those details on the GSG website linked below. Um, on top of the cost of the box, you'll also need to pay shipping. Shipping's gonna be somewhere around 100 bucks. If you have access to a loading dock, that can lower the shipping cost. Um, I'd also recommend looking to see if there's someone else in your area that wants to do an order at the same time. That way you can split the shipping. Uh, GSG is really easy to work with to combine those shipping costs across multiple orders so that everyone's cost come down, comes out a little bit lower. So that's uh, a good way to go if you can. For amplification, I would recommend going with a uh, NX3000 from Behringer. Uh, you can bridge that and that'll give you a ton of juice. You can also do a 1502 from Crown or uh, the bump up model from there. I think it's 2002 maybe uh, for the, the next step up and that'll do you well. So for me right now, I'm running mine on a 1502 from Crown. And like I said before, I didn't think it was gonna be enough power, but it's totally enough power. It, I, I mean, it, it I, it's too loud for me. I cannot turn that thing up all the way. Um, so, uh, whichever way. I mean, if you if you want the ultimate experience, then you know, buy the uh, buy the three thousand and Bridget or the six thousand from Behringer. The three thousand D, the version with a DSP, and you're going to need that either from your amp or from a mini DSP. Uh, that's going to run you about four hundred bucks. Outside of that, you're gonna need assorted stuff. You're gonna need some screws, you're gonna need the 
uh, the power adapter for the speak on cable, and all of that stuff is gonna run you somewhere probably between 100 and 200 bucks, um, including parts and tools if you don't have all the tools. So you're gonna need clamps for this, you're gonna need glue for this. Uh, you know, it's nice to have uh, a power drill that you can use to put screws in and out with. So, you know, I think most people will have some of this stuff, but if you don't have everything you need, that will add some cost onto the entire project total. So all in, you're gonna be somewhere around 1850 for a single unit. Now, if you go for two, you can lower the cost, uh, you know, shipping will be lower. Uh, some of the cost comes off of the enclosures. Uh, I don't think there's anything you can do with the drivers. They, they are what they are. Uh, but you can get some efficiencies due to scale and lower the overall price. So it's not going to be 2x, but it'll be like 1.8x or something like that. Um, two of these things in your room, though, that is disgusting. Kevin from GSG runs three in his room, and I, I don't know how he stands it. Um, you know, that's pushing up into, I don't know, just say 133, 136. That's like 140 decibels-ish if he pushes them hard. And that's a lot of, that's that's a lot. I mean, that, that's a lot. <laughs> Those are numbers from cars, right? Um, but, uh, but you know, that, that that's the cost. That's what you're gonna look at to get into one of these units and, uh, and, and get all the stuff that you need to finish it. Now, one thing that I haven't talked about, and this is where you can go crazy and do all kinds of weird stuff if you want to, is the finish. So just think about that. Uh, you can do anything from spray paint, to veneer, to laminate, to just whatever you can, you can, you know, divine on your own. Um, and you'll want to consider what the cost of that is. I uh, used spray on Duratex with a compressor and a spray gun, and it is amazing. So that's a good way to go. Um, it's way better than trying to roll that stuff on with rollers. So that's probably more than you ever wanted to know about the GSG Devastator. Um, you know, in summation, it is a crazy subwoofer. I've never owned anything exactly like it before or anything even kind of close to it before. It, it's a monster, it's ridiculous, it's overkill, and it's really cool. I mean, it's awesome. You, you should try one out. Um, find a friend who's got one, check them out on the internet, do what you gotta do, but uh, this is something that you should experience if you haven't experienced one yet. Uh, thanks for watching the video. As always, please hit that subscribe button. It's super important to the channel. It's what allows me to keep bringing you this content. Um, if you like it, give me a thumbs up, and I'd love to hear your comments down below. Um, is this something that you would consider putting in your room? Have you heard them? What, what do you think about them? Um, and is there more that you want to know about this subwoofer? Do you wanna get into some topics around integrating with other ported enclosures like full Marty's or is there anything else that you would want to know before making the jump into your own Devastator? Have a great day and thanks for watching.